Hi and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptids Roost. Let's just take a moment silence for all the haters, Karens and the trolls, that's enough. Be sure to check out the blooper reel at the end of the video, which is then followed by the end screen where you will find more videos listed. So grab your coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. Hangman's Trail This awesome story is written by Corpse Child. Corpse Child now has two books available. Damned Whispers Within this accursed tome lies an unlucky 13 chilling tales to send an everlasting chill down your spine. From horrifying whispers, from damned spirits, to killer forests and haunted lakes, to cursed children's toys and possessed video games, and even sinister family members who are true monsters, hidden in human skin. These gospels of horror are sure to always rob you of a peaceful slumber. The Other Side For ages man has looked in awe and terror to the beyond, to that which he cannot see or hear. The question has always remained the same, but none know its answer. Within this tome, however, whether it's the unseen boundaries of the veil, the boundaries of a mirror, or even simply the noises from under your floor, behind a freezer door, or the other end of a phone call, are 19 Gospels that answer the age-old question, what lies on the other side? They are both available, both as a Kindle ebook and also in paperback. Except other side, that one is also available in hardback. Be sure to check them out. The Amazon links to both books will also be listed below in the description. Clear skies, cool breeze and the whole week spent hiking with my friends. What could go wrong? Well. Let me tell you one thing first, when your folks tell you to choose your friends wisely, to make sure just how well you really know them, listen to them. Who knows, it might just keep you out of shit like what happened to me. It was spring break and we were all packed into my minivan for a big hiking trip we'd been planning for a couple of weeks leading up. See. Senior year college classes had been putting us through all kinds of hell and so we collectively agreed we needed a break. Our plan to hike all around Grenview Pines, sightseeing, exploring nature and just admiring the place. We found this area after hours of scouring Google for places to stage this little getaway. Mara, my girlfriend, said she wanted to go somewhere picturesque. Somewhere secluded, you know? Just like a place you'd think was only in a movie or something, she told me. When I showed her a few of the snapshots they had listed for the area, she was ecstatic. Oh my god, babe, it's beautiful. We have to go there, please. Personally, I had to agree. The place was gorgeous, at least from what I saw from the photos. It reminded me a lot of when I visited my grandparents cabin up in Chimney Rock. It looked like a quiet, peaceful place to sort of just get away from everything and unwind. Exactly what I wanted. Reading through the various reviews and posts from others about the place, most of them seemed to correspond with this as well. Almost every one of them used phrases like picturesque, vibrant, quiet, and even a few that labelled the place as being straight out of an art gallery. When looking for any ideal hiking trails in Grenview Pines, I was met with a map with a list of at least five or six that wrapped around the mountain. My mind was made then, having also ran the idea by the others. Kendrick, 
Todd and Todd's girlfriend Amanda, all of whom had more or less the same reaction about Grandview as me and Mara. The only one that wasn't big on the idea was Shauna. Isn't there where they used to hang people for like witchcraft and shit? We looked at her, confused. Yeah, they used to hang women there for witchcraft. So, Todd asked, what does it matter? So, you don't think that's a little insensitive? She retorted. Shona had a bit of a point there. She was an open Wiccan, spending most of her time outdoors in thickly wooded areas and even hosting online tarot or rune readings every weekend or so for a bit of extra cash. That was exactly how me and Mara met for the first time. Unfortunately, Todd was the opposite. His folks were deacons at the local church, and while they were all Baptists, in other words, not exactly the most uppity about that shit, or so I thought, they still weren't very fond of stuff like witchcraft. Because of this, we typically hung out with them separately, but this time I wanted all of us to have fun together as a group. Todd rolled his eyes and remarked, What? You're afraid you're gonna burst into flames or something from being on holy ground? Hell, who knows? Maybe you'll hear your dead ancestors screaming, Save me, Satan! Or some shit. Shauna wasn't amused, to say the least. I could tell she was two seconds from kicking Todd's ass and flaking on the trip, so I stepped in. That's enough, Todd. Leave her alone. What? I'm just saying. She's been all prude and sensitive about it because she knows I'm right. Go fuck yourself, Todd. He then made a mocking face and said in a fake voice, Uh oh, you hear that? She's gonna curse me. I'm so scared now. Ooh. I said knock it off, I shouted. He scoffed before throwing his hands up and storming off. I turned back to Shauna, whose face was a mix of anger as well as something else. Almost of some sort of paranoia. Hey, I said, putting my hand on her shoulder. Don't let him get to you. He's just an asshole sometimes. Yeah, sure, she said. Whatever, but seriously, that place is fucked up. My grandmother told me about it. She actually used to visit that place. She said there was a trail called Trail of the Hanged Horse. She told me that was where people would back in the day drag women, strip them and hang them for being witches before burning them as an offering to the hangman. I looked at her, confused. Her face was frozen in an expression of anxiety. I could tell that she wasn't bullshitting here. Or at least, not intentionally. Hangman? I asked. Who's that? I don't remember his name. Draco, maybe. Something Draco. But yeah, so he was like this really batshit insane guy who was all religious and stuff and was apparently a local witch hunter for the area back in the day. From what I was told, he would hide out in the woods deep in the mountains waiting to attack witches whenever they'd gather there. Draco, I wondered. I'd never heard of that name before from any lectures in my history classes about the witch trials. I figured he must have been a small timer, not all that notable like Matthew Hopkins or someone like that. Either that or people must have tried to keep his name hidden from the history books. Maybe out of fear or shame. Possibly both. How many did he... Don't know exactly. At least a couple hundred for sure. But at some point, he died. Still though, women were being hanged there for witchcraft. My grandmother told me that it still happens even today. Even though, you know, we don't hunt witches anymore. Who's doing it? I asked. Admittedly, a bit shocked. That's just it. Nobody really knows. Grandma told me it's the ghost of the hangman possessing people or something, telling them to hunt and kill people who they think are witches. Others say it's some sort of cult or something. Either way, 
I'm just really not a fan. I was stumped. I wasn't sure what to say. Like I said, I wanted to have all my friends with me for this trip, but how could I argue with her here? Sure, I wasn't completely buying the whole Ghost of Witchfinder cadet haunting the trails of Grenview Pines thing, though I did later on look up a bit of history on the place. Turns out she was at least telling the truth about the site being the place where executions took place during the witch trials. She was also right about there being a number of disappearances of women after supposedly hiking that trail. No mention however of any hangman or anything like that. I even tried looking up the name Draco. Nothing. Even still, I guess I could see why she was uncomfortable with the place. Like she said, it did seem a little fucked up to drag her to a place where people who were like her were killed for having a different religion. I told her that it was up to her if she wanted to come along or not. It was another two days before I got a text from her saying she was willing to give it a shot. That Saturday we all gathered at my house. Well, look who decided to show up after all, Todd sneered. Cut it out man, I retorted. We haven't even left the house yet. Fine, just saying though, you might want to watch out for little miss Blair Witch here. Who knows what she'll happen to people like... I said that's enough. He rolled his eyes and sighed before throwing his stuff into the van. Once we were all packed into the van, making sure Todd and Shauna were as far apart as possible from each other, it was Greenview Pines or Bust. Fortunately, the drive was more or less smooth sailing from that point. Things seemed good and well, aside from maybe Shauna's constant look of worry she had chiselled on her face the closer we came to the mountain pass. I noticed even this though seemed to pass a bit once we actually entered Grenview Pines. Now I'm not exaggerating when I say that mine and Mara's breaths were literally taken right out of us seeing the mountain. Kendrick and Todd kept gawping in every direction as we went along, constantly shouting, Bro, check this out! Or, Dude, you gotta see this! Amanda couldn't stop squealing like a little girl who found out she got a pony for her birthday, constantly trying to snap pictures of the mountain pass. Words like beautiful, vibrant, and even picturesque were gross understatements when it came to describing the scenery. Let me put it to you this way. It was like we were driving through a professional painting that had only just been painted and was still wet. What I mean is that the colours, the details and even overall atmosphere, all of it seemed fresh and new, like it had only been there for a couple of hours, like wet paint on a canvas. The place was alive. Even Shauna seemed to actually lighten up a bit, smiling out of her window as we drove along. Eventually Kendrick asked if we could drop an anchor so he could take a piss. Ironically enough, we weren't far from the destined trail, about half a mile out, and my legs were starting to get tired anyway from driving over four and a half hours straight, so I figured what the hell, and stopped. It was here though at the entrance to the trail that Shauna started looking nervous again. When I asked her about it however, she shook her head and said, It's fine, just thought I... She trailed off, looking deep into the trail. What? I asked. Her eyes snapped back to me, seemingly confused. You were saying something. You said that you thought you were something. What's up? She looked back at the trail, eyebrows furrowed in concentration. I don't know, she said. I feel like I... like I sense something. 
What do you mean? I don't know. I just feel something. Like some sort of spiritual energy coming from in there. What kind of energy? Admittedly, I wasn't sure what to think here. While I wasn't into magic or witchcraft, I wasn't spiritual, like Todd, either. In other words, I'd never really had much to do with anything supernatural related. Stuff like ghosts, demons or spirits, or mystical energy. That said, I wasn't one to straight up sweep that kind of thing under the rug either. An open-minded skeptic, essentially. She rubbed her temples, wincing. I don't know. She groaned. Look, you think we can find a different trail? I sighed and looked to the others, who'd already started walking in. I could tell Shauna really wasn't comfortable with this, but at the same time, what was I going to tell the others? I mean, I still didn't understand myself, outside of her personal objections and a bad feeling. If nothing else, I really didn't feel like hearing Todd take jabs at Shauna again. Tell you what, I said finally, we'll do this. We'll hike here for a while. If something starts happening, we'll head back out here immediately. That sound cool? She glanced back and forth between me and the trail, still looking anxious, before sighing and saying, Fine. To help her relax, I promised I'd be right by her side the entire time. She seemed to accept this and we ran to try and catch up with the others. The trail itself was just as colourful and detailed as the rest of the mountain. Though you wouldn't have known it by looking at Shauna's face, which was constantly darting in every direction like she'd seen something or someone watching us. It took about 20 minutes before we finally found them again, about midway in. They were standing around what looked like some sort of scarecrow or something. It was about 7 foot tall and was made out of what looked like the skeleton of a person tied to a wooden cross with a large black hood over the head and a rope around its neck that was knotted into a noose that hung like a necklace. Yo, Pat, check this out, Kendrick exclaimed. Cool, huh? What is it? I asked, glancing into the eyes of the thing. It's kind of creepy, Amanda chimed in. Personally, I had to agree, and I could see Mara wasn't really keen on the thing either. None of us, however, could compare to Shauna, whose face was even whiter than usual looking at the thing. Shauna? Mara called out. What's wrong? Shauna was frozen. Shauna? Very faintly, her mouth opened and I heard her whisper. Uh, hangman. Huh? Hangman. She repeated. That's him, just like I told you. I looked back to the scarecrow. That's right, Todd sneered with a shit-eating grin. That's the guy that used to hang people like you. I glared at him, hoping he'd pick up that this really wasn't the time for him to be an asshole. He didn't, and he went on to say, You think we'll find one of your ancestors here? Hanging around, laughing. Shauna didn't seem to notice him though. In fact, she didn't seem to notice any of us. She just stood staring white faced and jaw slacked into the scarecrow's face. Shauna, I called out. Nothing, just standing there, rooted where she stood. I called out her name again, this time shouting, Shauna! For a second, she was still, before turning around and booking it in the other direction where we came. Shauna! I shouted. Shauna! Where are you going? Come back! She was long gone. Let her go, dude! Todd said. Let her go. Connect with nature, or some shit. 
I turned to him, feeling my blood start to boil. What the hell is wrong with you? I barked. Look, just because she's a witch doesn't mean you get to be an asshole. Oh, how cute. Sticking up for old good witch Glenda there. Look man, I'm just trying to have some fun here. Not my fault she decides to play with magic and shit. Enough, Todd, Amanda scolded. His eyes went wide, hearing this, and he snapped to look at her. Patrick's right. She's a person too. You don't have the right to be mean to her over her beliefs, especially since she hasn't done a single thing to you. Todd stared, shocked. You too, babe. She stood glaring at him. Wow, he exclaimed, sounding like he'd been betrayed. Great, okay, you know what, fine, fuck it, let's go find your little nature girl, since you'll apparently like her so much. I was half a second away from force feeding him a knuckle sandwich with the side of my boot in his ass, when I felt Mara tugging at my arm. Come on, we gotta find her before it gets too dark. Looking up, I saw that the sun was indeed going down. The light was apparently bleeding through the trees now. I knew we maybe only had an hour and a half if we were lucky to find Shauna before it got too dark to see anything. And because I planned on her stopping mid-trail and building a fire for camping for the night, neither my dumb ass or anybody else bothered to bring a flashlight. We all walked together in the direction we came from, all calling out into the trees around us. Shauna! There was no sound, either from her or anything else for that matter. Actually, looking back, I don't exactly remember hearing any sounds other than the five of us. It felt like we walked for at least an hour, even though I knew we hadn't even been an hour's walk from where we'd started, and there was no sign of Shauna. I was really starting to get worried. Where is she? A flurry of thoughts about Shauna being attacked by some wild animal out here in the woods, despite strangely not seeing or hearing any sign of wildlife anywhere at all, or getting hurt and unable to move or get help. God, Shauna, why'd you have to run off? I started thinking about the scarecrow again, wondering what got her this spooked about it. What did she mean by hangman? I thought back to what she told me of the hangman and his supposed ghost, and of the weird energy from earlier. Again, not exactly one to really believe that sort of thing, but then I remembered what she said about some crazy cult or something devoted to this guy, to the hangman snatching women and killing them here in the woods in his name, or whatever. That put a new thought into my head, one that made my heart drop into my stomach. What if there could be some maniac or maniacs out here in the woods with us? Have they already gotten Shauna? This caused me to quicken my stride along, shouting louder for Shauna. Unfortunately, this did me no good either, and we were finally forced to stop when the sun finally sank far down below the trees. We set up a small fire where we were, and laid out our sleeping bags, deciding not to bother with the tents, since we'd need to be up first thing in the next morning to continue looking for Shauna. For a while we just sat around the fire, no one really seeming to have anything to say. No one even seemed to have any appetite either, declining my offer to break out the bratwursts I brought for us. Everyone just sat 
either staring grimly at the fire or looking nervously around at the trees surrounding us. Everyone that is of course except for Todd, he looked more annoyed than concerned. This irritated me but I said nothing. I stayed at the fire listening to it crackle and pop, the only sound in the area by the way, silently praying that Shauna was okay. Amanda broke the silence. I hope she's okay. I'm sure she is, Kendrick replied. I wonder what riled her up. Amanda glared at Todd. What? he exclaimed. What'd I do? You're kidding, right? Mara snapped. You don't think that you spouting the hangman's gonna get you? didn't have anything to do with this. How was I supposed to know she'd be such a pussy about it? What is your problem, huh? Where do you get off being a jerk to someone who's different? You mean because the fact that she worships the devil? And you're so much better, I chimed, venom seeping into my voice. I don't know what y'all's deal is. If she was so scared of this shit, she shouldn't have come. I'm not going to feel bad for it either. I said what I said. That tore it for me. Oh yeah, I shouted. Well, how about this? Next time, how about we just leave you out, huh? Then we won't have to deal with an arrogant fuckface like you. He scoffed, rolled in his eyes and stood up, grabbing his sleeping bag. Okay. Fine. You guys don't want me around. I'll go. Me and Mandy will sleep over. Oh, hell no, Amanda blurted. You're on your own. We're through. Wait, what? You're not serious? What the fuck, babe? Come on. No, I mean it. I'm not going to be with someone who's going to be bigoted like that. It's childish, stupid, and I'm not having anything to do with it. Are you? Todd just stood there for a second, once again dumbfounded. Finally, he sighed and said, Okay, look, I'm sorry. Please don't. Bye, Todd, she snapped, cutting him off for a second time. Again, he stood for a moment before I saw his face twist into the most deranged glare I'd ever seen from him and declaring that we'd regret this before storming off into the woods with his stuff. After that, it was silent again. It was late by that point, almost a quarter to midnight and my eyes began to become increasingly hard to keep open. Amanda was the first to nod off followed almost immediately by Kendrick. Mara lasted a little longer, but eventually she too was fast asleep. I was the last one to go. I don't know how long I actually was out, but I remember being briefly awakened to the sound of rustling coming from the woods. Now real quick, keep in mind I'm not a light sleeper at all. I grew up in the city, usually being as busy as night time as it was during the day. Plus the dorm I live in is one of those where somebody in my hall was throwing a party almost every other night, loud ones too. Suffice to say I'm usually pretty well conditioned when it comes to sleeping through just about any kind of noise. I guess though because of how worried I was about Shauna and the fact that there hadn't been any sounds around us for so long until just then, I must have noticed them out of alarm. Looking around I saw nothing and there were no sounds again. Uh, hello? I called out groggily. Who, who's there? Nothing. No sounds, no rustling, nothing. Whatever, I thought as I lay back down. I was out again almost instantly. When I was awakened again, it was to Kendrick shaking me, whispering to me, Dude, wake up. 
<gasps> I snapped, almost bolting straight up. Kendrick, dude, what are you? There's someone in the woods. I cut my eyebrows at him. What are you talking about? There's somebody walking around the woods. I think he's watching us or something. I got up to take a leak when I saw him looking at me behind another tree. It's probably Todd, also having to take a piss or something. That's not it, dude. There was a couple of them scrambling around in the trees. There was something else I saw, too. What? I asked, now noticeably more alarmed. People watching us. But where? Why? It's... it's... he stammered. I noticed that his entire body was shaking. Oh god, dude, it was a body. It was a dead fucking body hanging from one of the trees. I bolted upright. Where? He pointed off to our left into the woods. Out there, dude. We gotta get out of here. Who was it? I asked, already getting a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. What? Hanging from the tree. Did you see who it was? I don't know, man. Some chick or something. Bro, what does it even matter? We have to get the hell out of here. Take me to it, I demanded. His face went albino white. Are you fucking nuts, dude? Did you not hear a single word I just fucking said? I said something is watching. Yeah, I heard you. And we have someone missing out there. You forget about that? His face somehow managed to sink further into a state of shock. And you said you saw a body? Y yeah He replied weakly. Don't you think we need to see whether or not that's Shauna? He slumped down, still shaking like he had an alarm clock stuffed down his throat. I quickly scrambled out to my sleeping bag. Come on, let's go get the others. I started shaking Mara awake while he went for Amanda. Sweetheart, hey babe, come on, you got awake. But Amanda's gone. What? My head snapped to look at him. He was holding Amanda's sleeping bag, with no Amanda. She's gone, dude, he exclaimed. This caused Mara to stir awake. Huh? Patrick? What's going? Come on, babe, we gotta go. I helped her out of her sleeping bag before running over to Kendrick. Where did you see it? See what? Mara asked, joining us. Kendrick filled it in on the details when I glanced at Amanda's sleeping bag. On it was what appeared to be some symbol painted in what I was hoping to God wasn't blood. It looked like a cross with a large hoop dangling from the bottom of it. Guys, look at this! I pointed to the symbol and they both looked confused. What is that? Mara asked me. I don't know. It looks like one of those symbols Shauna would show us when she'd tell our fortune or something. What she calls them? Runes? I felt a chill run through me. She was right. It did look like something Shauna would have drawn. Then I started thinking about the body Kendrick was panicking over. What if it isn't Shauna's? Kendrick, where's the body? I urged. He was frozen in shock. I shouted his name again, this time breaking him from his stupor. Where's the body? Here, yeah, he said, shaking. Follow me. He led us about a mile away from our camp when he stopped us. There. I saw it. There in the moonlight was the silhouette of a woman hanging from one of the distant trees. I ran up to it and I screamed. Guys, come quick! It was Amanda. She was hanging there, stripped completely naked 
with her mouth duct taped and her wrists tied behind her back. I retched and had to cover my mouth. Mara and Kendrick came running over. What's going? She cut off abruptly to scream. Kendrick exclaimed, Dear God! Before also retching, Dude, we gotta get out of here! What about her? Mara cried. We can't just leave her here. Better her than us. What about Shauna? Shauna! Kendrick exclaimed. That's what you're worried about? Look at Amanda! And didn't you say that it was one of her little witch symbols on her sleeping bag? Look, I hate to say it, but I'm starting to think Todd might have been right. Either way, that's gonna be us if we don't get the fuck out of- Guys, shut up! I snapped, cutting him off. You hear that? It was faint, but I could hear something rustling in the trees around us. It was quick, whatever it was and it sounded like it was darting back and forth from one tree to the next. What... what is it? Mara asked nervously. It's coming from over there. I pointed to the woods at our right. I could hear it again, seeming to close in from all around us. Yeah, I hear it too, Kendrick said, shaking. Come on, we gotta get out of here. What about Amanda? Mara asked. We can't just leave her here. And what about Shauna? She's still... What about us? Look, let's get out of here. We can get help or something. Just please, can we go? All right, here's what we're gonna do. I said, tossing Kendrick the keys to the minivan. The sounds were getting closer. Mara, you and Kendrick head back to the van. As soon as you get down to the mountain, find the police and have them send somebody out here. What about you? I'm going to see if I can find Shauna. Her eyes bugged out. Look, I'll be fine. Just go. I could tell she was about to try and protest, but Kendrick took her by the hand and began leading her back towards the entrance of the trail. The wrestling was so close now that it felt like it was right on top of me. Shauna! I called out into the trees. Shauna! Is that you? Nothing. Just rustling. Zipping from tree to tree all around me. That was when a shiver dropped down my spine, realising it wasn't just one thing or person in the woods. I was surrounded and I couldn't move. I noticed though that right as they'd be right on me, where I'd actually be able to see them, they stopped and began sort of zipping around me instead of towards me. They are circling me. Who's there? I finally managed to shout. There was no response and the sound stopped. Who are you? What do you want? Silence. Having finally worked up enough courage to move, I very slowly stepped forward. Who are you? What do you want with me and my friends? I took another step forward, and another, slowly advancing to another of the trees behind the one Amanda was hanging from. Why did you? I was cut off when I saw something shoot out from behind the tree and snag my throat instantly tightening and suffocating me. I clawed frantically at it, but it was no use. The knot tightened around my throat as I felt myself being pulled towards the tree by it. I stumbled and fell, causing me to be dragged on my stomach to the tree. My vision started clouding with every second the knot was around my throat, forcing the air right out of me. The last thing I saw was a figure step out from behind the tree, holding the other end of the rope, pulling it taut. The figure looked like a man, buck-assed nude and muscular, 
with a black executioner's hood over his face and what looked like a noose around his own neck, dangling like a necklace. This made my eyes go even bigger, not just from strangulation, but from pure terror. It was the hangman. He was real. I would have screamed had the noose not been choking me. As it was, I let out a stringed wheezing before my vision went completely dark. Being perfectly honest, I actually thought I died right then and there. This was quickly thrown out the window when I awoke to what I felt like a hot piece of metal being pressed into my side. I groaned in pain as my vision strained back to normal. Directly in front of me was a giant bright orange light and I felt an immense heat blasting my face. Looking down I saw that I was naked with my wrists tied and hoisted above my head. Just above my left hip was a pentagram in the shape of a goat branded into my skin with that symbol from before on Amanda's sleeping bag above it. I looked up to see more of them gathered around me, all nude with hoods over their faces and wearing noose necklaces. Who are you? I cried out weakly. For a moment they all just stood there silently glaring at me through their hoods. Finally one of them shouted, In the name of the hangman, Edmund Draco, God's destroyer of the wicked, an instrument of righteousness, we continue his good work by cleansing the earth of vile creatures like you. What? What are you talking about? Who is Edmund Draco? My mind went back to what Sean had told me about the Hangman legend, how apparently he was once a witch hunter named Draco. Was this the same guy? Then I remembered what she said about a crazy cult that lurked through these woods, snatching people they see as witches and killing them. What do you want with me? I didn't do anything. I'm not even a witch. I said another voice. This one sounded like a young woman. But ye consort with a witch, ye be in league with one of Lucifer's whores. What are you even talking about? I'm an atheist. I don't believe in any of that shit. I heard a shocked gasp pass through the crowd. Look, this is fucking insane. Let me go. You hear that? called another younger voice. This one sounded familiar, too familiar. He denounces God. He of his own will has testified to rejecting Christ. He's in league with a witch and thus his soul is just as tainted. He must be cleansed. My eyes almost shot from my head. No, that isn't. Todd? He then pulled off his hood revealing his smirking face, still looking as devious as ever. My heart stopped abruptly. What are you doing the Lord's work? We are ridding the land of the wickedness of witchcraft, just as he, the great hangman, did long ago. He then gestured to the bonfire in front of me. The skeletal scarecrow from before looming down from behind the blaze. We continue his good work. You're insane! I screamed at him. You all are! You murdered Amanda, your girlfriend! His face instantly dropped his triumphant smirk and he became cold, bitter. Ex-girlfriend, remember? She chose like you to side with the devil. He's to blame with his harlot familiar she is responsible for her death. I started struggling to no use. The rope tied around my wrists was tight to the point where I began losing feeling in them. You do know there are people who are gonna come looking for me, right? They'll see what you've done, find all of you and lock you up for life. His demented grin almost immediately turned full blast. 
Oh really? And who would that be? He then pointed towards the crowd to two of them dragging long ropes behind them. My blood was chilled once again when coming towards the light of the bonfire, I saw that they were dragging the frightened and struggling bodies of Mara and Kendrick. You mean them? He chided. Others who've sided against God? You look to them for aid? He chuckled deviously <laughs> before saying, And that is why you have no hope. You have turned from the Lord and embraced sinfulness. Thus the lot of you must face the judgment of the hangman. The two men then dragged Kendrick who was wheezing intensely and clawing at the rope in front of the fire. I started feebly struggling again. Don't you fucking touch him you freak. He paid no attention. I watched as the two figures then forced him up to his feet in front of Todd his body hanging limply in their arms. Kendrick Ulrich, Todd declared, his voice starting to deepen. You stand accused of consorting with a witch and being in league with servants of evil. How do you plead? To this, the crowd chanted, Guilty! in unison. Kendrick himself said nothing, only coughing and gasping for air like a hooked fish. Guilty, Todd declared. You have been found guilty in the eyes of the hangman for consorting with the devil. You attempt to play with fire, sell your soul to fire, and therefore, he pointed to the bonfire, it is by fire you must be cleansed. The two men began dragging Kendrick to the bonfire and tying the other end to a tree branch that hung above it. Kendrick tried squirming again, but the men were strong, clutching him with an iron vice grip. They then, after tying his hands behind his back, hoisted his body by the throat and dropped him to dangle over the flames. I could only watch, breathless and petrified, as my friend was slowly barbecued over the bonfire, dangling by his neck. He was engulfed by the flames in less than seconds. I still hear the screams, if you could even call it that, he made as he burned alive. It didn't sound natural or even human at all, like if you mixed the whistling sound a tea kettle makes with the yowling of a cat, that's what it sounded like. Through it all, Todd watched with a grin on his face. I felt my own body go limp with terror as Kendrick's screams died with the rest of him. You're a freak, Todd! I cried out in rage. You're an animal! He didn't acknowledge me, instead instructing the two men dragging Mara along to bring her to the fire like with Kendrick. This sent my heart racing again. No! Mara! Let her go! Mara Edwards, you stand accused of consorting with a witch and been in league with servants of evil. How do you plead? Like with Kendrick, the crowd roared again. Guilty! I tried to yank my arms down from over my head with all the strength I had. Still, my hands weren't going anywhere. Mara looked up at him, a look of hatred in her eyes and she spat in his face. Go to hell! Todd, his face enraged again, delivered a swift swipe across her left cheek. You spit in my face! He roared. To hell is where I will personally send you back to where you belong, slut! He jerked her by the rope around her neck over to the fire and tied her hands behind her back. Mara! I cried. Mara! She looked up at me as Todd was tying the other end around the branch, readying to drop her into the fire. Her eyes were wide and sad and I saw her open her mouth, just faintly hearing her whisper, I love you Patrick, before she was dropped over the flames. 
I screamed and howled until my vocal cords essentially ripped open as Mara burned. It took even longer for her to die than Kendrick, forcing me to have to listen and watch even longer as she suffered. Eventually, it was silent again. I hung limply in my restraints again. I had nothing left. No strength, no motivation, no will to try and fight anymore. This was it. I was next, and there wasn't a damn thing I could do about it. I felt myself get jerked forward towards the fire by the rope around my neck. Todd began his speech again. Patrick Reed, you stand accused of... FREEZE! called a voice from the trees to my right. Todd and the crowd all snapped their heads in that direction of the voice. I looked over and immediately went slack-jawed. It was the police. But how? Todd looked just as baffled as me. The crowd slowly began backing away from the area of the woods. All of you, on the ground, hands behind your heads, the officer ordered, pistol trained at Todd. More officers then began emerging from the woods, guns drawn and aimed at the crowd. No one made a move. They stood silently as the officers moved in closer. They are the devil's servants! Todd shouted. They too have sided with the evil one. He then pointed at an officer and declared, Seize them for judgment. The crowd went berserk again and leapt for the officers. Instantly, the sounds of gunshots filled the air and at least 10 of them, including Todd himself, dropped dead. Seeing this, the remainder of them fled into the trees left of me disappearing from sight almost immediately. The officers then moved into the area, covering it, with a few heading further in after the others who got away. I was speechless, baffled, awed. I was locked in a state of shock. I was alive. I was just seconds away from being burned alive like my friends, but I was alive. I'd been saved, but the question then came back to me, how? Where had they come from? Who called them? And how did they find me deep in the woods? While one of the officers was cutting me free, I asked him. We got an anonymous call from someone who said they were a friend of yours, he replied. Apparently, they'd seen your little pal here dropping and hanging a girl's body to a tree a little ways back. When we found the body, we were able to follow the racket going on leading here. Anonymous call? It didn't take long before it hit me. Shauna, she's still alive. They led me out to the trail and back to my van. Sure enough, there was Shauna waiting by the van with two other officers. She ran up and quickly snatched me into a bear hug. Are you okay? I'm sorry I ran off like that, but I didn't feel right. And when I saw later what Todd did... She stopped and looked around. Where are the others? I gave her a grim expression, being two seconds from bursting into tears, and turned my head to the entrance of the trail. I didn't need to say anything. She understood enough to immediately start tearing up herself. What I did manage to choke out was, thank you. Of course, you're my friend and you always stood up for me. I just wish I could have been quicker with it. Maybe then... She trailed off, looking towards the trail again. After that, Shauna hugged me tight before being escorted away by a police officer as the ambulance showed up and checked me out. Once that was all over with, I was finally allowed to go home. A couple of police cars followed as escorts back to my house. To say I didn't sleep well that night is a grave understatement. 
and it's not gotten any better since. I haven't really felt comfortable leaving my house, save for the quick grocery run I made two days ago. I feel afraid to be around people now after what happened. I still kept occasional contact with Shauna. It was actually her who convinced me to write this, both for comfort as well as a warning. See, it was about a week after this all happened that she texted me pictures of her grandmother's old journal. Apparently, she kept it for documenting her trips. In them, she actually had a detailed history of Grenview Pines, which of course would include, among a bunch of others, far more bizarre ghost stories. The Trail of the Hanged Whores. I spent hours reading, more or less, the same things she told me about before. Back in the witch trials, Edmund Draco was a proclaimed expert witch hunter, whose MO was the cleansing of the earth from the plague of witchcraft, to quote text. He was known to perform public executions in those woods where he dragged the devil's horse, as he constantly referred to them, and hang them over a blazing fire. The text further explains that he had managed to amass his own little group of witch hunters who basically all but worshipped the guy and followed his every command. Eventually, it's said that Draco managed to finally meet his match when he executed the head of a particular coven. I think they are called the Violet Sisterhood, maybe? I can't really remember. And the others managed to exact revenge by killing him one night in his sleep. It was said though that the hangman spirit became tethered to the land, forever linked to that trail where he executed witches, forever bound to continuing his task and leading his ever-expanding cult in delivering the earth from wickedness. Well, that's what the journal said anyway. And clearly Shauna and her grandmother weren't the only ones who believed the legend. Personally, I still don't believe in the hangman's ghost or any shit like that. But I do believe one thing. The second strongest fear next to the unknown is the power of belief. Belief like what drove Shauna to run away that day. Or like how people like Todd to devoted themselves to this supposed mission of righteousness. The power of belief is a power that should never be underestimated. I also believe that a book should never be judged by its cover. Corny, I know, but I can't lie and say that it doesn't apply here. I'd known Todd, or thought I did, since high school. In all that time, I never once thought that he'd do the things he did. And with Grandview Pines itself, an absolutely beautiful place. I wouldn't have thought that such horrible things happened and still happen there. At the same time, where he and Kendrick were quick to assume the worst from Shauna because she was Wiccan. She was the only one who saved my life. The last thing I'll say is this. I'll believe in one other thing. They are still out there in the woods of Grenview Pines still seeking to rid the land of wickedness of witchcraft, just as he, the great handman, did long ago. And I hope you enjoy the blooper reel. It was spring break and we were all packed into my minivan. Our plan? To hike all around Grandview Plains. Reading through the various reviews and posts from others around. And even hosting online tarot or rude reading. I was really starting to get what. I started thinking about the scarecrow again, wondering what got her. We set up a small fire where we were laid out. We set up a small fire where we were 
and laid out our sleeping bags. <coughs> we got awake. I was cut off when I saw something shoot out from behind me. I watched as the two figures then forced him to... We got an anonymous call from someone they... And clearly Shauna and her grandma... Hey family, please be so kind as to throw punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to choke hold to that notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. And by subscribing you'll be the first to see all of our new spooky creepypasta stories. A very big thank you to Corpse Child for allowing me to narrate this awesome story. Make sure to check out their Reddit profile for more brilliant stories. And be sure to take a look at the playlist here for more of their stories that I may have already narrated. I would just like to say a very big thank you to all of the authors that I have worked with and all the ones that I will work with in the future. So thank you all, my brothers and sisters. And why not hashtag CryptidsRoost in your comments. A quick thank you to all of my Cryptids Roost community family too. We are now well on our journey to 1,000 subscribers. So please spread the word and help us to grow and expand. And don't forget to share the videos too. If you would like to throw me a dollar or three, I'd be very much appreciative. I do have PayPal, paypal.me slash cryptidsroost. Alternatively, I have an account at buymeacoffee.com. You don't even need to register on either site to donate. You can also follow us at my Facebook group, Twitter and Instagram. I also have Ko-Fi, BitChute and Rumble. I have a subreddit if you have a story you would like me to narrate for you. All relevant links will be below. And don't forget to check out the end screen. See above. That will also list some more videos in my back catalogue. Take care everyone and I hope you all have a wonderful and peaceful night. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. <laughs>